All right, and we're ready for Fleeting Thoughts, Episode 3. Are you ready for this? Uh, anyway, um, so yeah, uh, welcome to Fleeting Thoughts. I'm Joe, and uh, this is Channing sitting in front of me. Uh, very exciting to have our third episode, and uh, I think we're uh, we're getting into it. We're learning how to do this whole thing, and uh, we have to shorten the episodes a little bit and try to be a little more uh, efficient and... Uh, economical with our situation um but anyway how are you channing i'm great joe (laughs) thank you for asking oh that shit spiked really good it's gonna be loud um just to wake up the listener working on our yeah yeah hello and welcome to our show um yeah i was listening to uh the joe rogan experience podcast and he had on uh anthony kumia uh who is a guy who used to do a show called Opie and Anthony. I never watched the show, but uh, he was <laughs> starting to uh, talk about how they uh, he does a radio show and he or a, a, a online video show and uh, he used to be on the radio or whatever. So they were doing radio voices. So I was I was just randomly doing radio voice in my house, <laughs> like out and about. And then I realized my door was open and that anybody could hear me. And so I stopped doing that. But if you uh, do it frequently enough, I'm sure that your neighbors are probably like, oh, yeah. it's just fucking Joe <laughs> yeah. just being himself again. Yeah, I think n- my neighbors could give a shit about me and uh, anything I do, um, at least uh, most of them. Uh, anyway, uh, so what's going on? How are you? What's what's new in your world? You writing um, any? You done with your book yet? No. <laughs> oh, I wish not? that I could just write a book in like a week and just do it. I'm actually probably somebody has been somebody who's done that. It may not be particularly good <laughs> or very lengthy, but uh, no, it's been good. I uh, I try to bust out like a thousand words a day if I can, if I have time. Sure. But um, yeah, it's it's going along pretty pretty swimmingly. Aside from work and everything else, it's pretty normal week so far. Cool. Yeah. That's exciting. All right. <laughs> and we're done. Welcome. <laughs> well, that's the show for the evening, uh, folks. Thanks for coming down, and we'll see you next week. Okay. Um, so let's discuss uh, some words uh, that we came up with uh, that I uh, think are uh, interesting. Uh, for no particular reason at all, we can talk about these things. Um, so the first word is uh, glib. Um, and... Uh, I was playing a video game and I decided to mock one of the um, characters in the game for being glib to my character. (laughs) So I was playing uh, Shadow of Mordor, uh, the new game, and I was uh, listening to an interaction between the characters and I was talking to myself the whole time I was playing the game. Like I was like, I I would like kill like six orcs in a row without anybody finding out. And then I'd just be like, yeah, I'm kind of a badass. Like I would say that out loud to myself. And then uh, there was a scene where um, (laughs) you had to do all this stuff and the guy's all like, the the guy that's helping you with the mission is like, okay, we got to do this. We got to do that. And uh, you know, you can't be seen. And so I just do the whole thing like perfectly. And I'm just like, yeah, I'm like a badass. Like it was the, uh, the black hand. Uh, guy, the the guy that you have to kill before you go to the second area. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, the black hand. He's like kind of hard to kill, but I learned his move set, and um, I took him out my my second try. The first try I got my ass kicked, and then the second try I just took him out. And then he's just laying in the in the mud, uh, dead. And then this girl comes up, and I'm just like, yeah, I just like murdered this really badass guy. Like obviously I'm going to win in this scenario. <laughs> no one can like mess with me. Um. But anyway, they were having a conversation, uh, my, the main character and then some, some other character, and the character was like, just sort of said something uh, uh, offhand like to explain the situation away, and then it just ended the scene. Like It was really bad writing at that particular moment. Most of the game is like really interesting writing. And uh, and I was like, well, that was awfully glib. Like I was like upset with the uh, the other character for um, for not having a reasonable <laughs> explanation for what's going on. Um, and I just realized that glib is not something people use very often. Um, so what's the uh, definition? Do you want to read that out? Oh yeah. Um, let's see. Glib is to be said or done too easily or carelessly, showing little preparation or thought. As in just letting words fly out your dumb head with no thought <laughs> yeah, processes yeah. behind it. Yeah, like uh, you, <laughs> like somebody just uh, just tries to brush you off with uh, the the explanation. I so realize that I just speak glibly at work all the time. 
Probably. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> like, I feel like you're, you're like half the time you're almost on autopilot. So yeah, you're just like nah, yeah. nah, nah, nah. A lot of times I'll just have to cut through the explanation or the the like question and just be like, no, no, no. Listen, I don't know what's going on. You don't know what's going on. We need to do more research, obviously, before we <laughs> we do this. But I guess it would be more glib to just bullshit an answer at that point, which I do all the time too. So, um. It also says to be nonchalant, so that's pretty. What is supposed to be nonchalant? Glib. Glib so is definitely non- nonchalant. Nonchalant is like another term for that. <sighs> oh, nonchalant is a really good word. Is that French? Do you think? Maybe. Maybe the chalant part. <laughs> the <of> chalant <laughs> part. The non is English or uh, Latin. It's one of those and, like, uh, hybrid words. Yeah, nonchalant to be uh, um, somewhat. Uh, what does it mean <laughs> to be just uh, to not really care? Just kind of like yeah. in passing, just nonchalantly mention that you murdered somebody, but don't <laughs> yeah, make a big yeah, deal yeah. out of it. It's not a big deal. He's yeah. dead. I didn't get caught. Well, let's just move on. Yeah, it's uh, reminds me of the word uh, laissez faire, which is uh, uh, French for uh, kind of uh, government system where they they don't put a lot of. They're not like really really strict. They're they're. It's like um, to be. Um, really open and free with most things and then uh they only get involved in particular important aspects so to have a laissez-faire uh government style is like really minimal government with uh uh minimal um intrusive actions it uh just sounds like another way of saying i like to have affairs with people but i'm kind of lazy about <laughs> yeah. it i just have a I've lot of laws affairs <laughs> lazy affairs <laughs> um so yeah, that's a that's a good word. Um, you'll have to use that in your n- book next Laza time. Laza flair? No, <laughs> laissez flair. <Laza> <laughs> I don't think it's flair. I'm gonna write a whole book about French government now, and just, yeah, just to, and my title at that, and then yeah. just throw that word around very glibly. Um, yeah, just <laughs> yeah, it, just pretend like you know something about French history, uh, because I played Assassin's Creed, I know about the French Revolution, obviously. Um, yeah. And they had a uh, uh, kind of laissez-faire. These games are known for their hundred uh, percent historical accuracy. So hundred <laughs> percent, because I think a hundred percent historical accuracy is possible. Uh, totally. Yeah. They had a guy with a time machine. He was there he living was there. the events, and then he yeah. came back to it, the present and informed everybody so they could make the game. It's on YouTube, so it's probably true. Um, yeah, the new Assassin's Creed game, I mean, they do actually do a pretty good job with their history in yeah. those games, so specifically. Uh, most games don't, but, I mean, uh, Middle-Earth Shadow of Mordor is uh, not exactly historically accurate. <laughs> <laughs> they get the, uh, Although. the pleasure of just a, of creating a universe that is fictional, so they can just do whatever they want. <laughs> yeah. so, I mean, they have like some rules to follow if they want to not piss off fans of Tolkien's universe, but yeah. they can pretty much do whatever. Yeah, I don't really know a lot about uh, Lord of the Rings, but playing the game, I'm like, wow, that's kind of interesting. Sauron, whoa, what kind of guy is he? Is, <laughs> is he a nice guy before? Or <laughs> what was he like? Be- like, why is he like this? Is he an orc or an uruk or whatever the hell they call the ones in the game? I always wondered that about villains. Like, are they just were they always just shitty people? Because like they don't give you any history on Sauron other than he tried to just dominate the world. Like, but yeah. why? Like. Did he just was he? Did he come out of his mom's vagina and was just like domination? <laughs> that's his whole purpose. Oh yeah, he's just like, uh, or he, he would come out and he would use that weird Gaelic sounding language in a deep voice and blah <laughs> blah blah. Oh, he's so cute. <laughs> no, I'm not. I want to kill people. Um, I want to enslave the earth with my eyeball. <laughs> he's just a big ass. Like giant with really nice armor and p- magical powers that are mostly psychological. Like he, yeah, he just kind of walks around. Like he's still like when he's in human, f- like when he's in uh, physical form, he has to like walk around and shit. But he's like this most powerful magical evil creature. I don't really know much about it. And then the moment he loses his finger with yeah. the ring on it, he's just done for. He's like yeah. Achilles, basically. Yeah, it's one weak spot. Achilles ring. That's what they should have named it, the Achilles if, rings. I wonder if he—that's uh, where he got the idea a little bit for that at all. 
If he was Whoa. just like, oh, look at this really like almost demigod type person, that one weakness yeah. that got exploited and well, just destroyed him. But aren't there a million, like there's like eight rings or something. So yeah, are, are I there think a bunch? I think there's n- more than that. I oh, I guess he was wearing the one that rules all the all other rings, which is kind of vague, but it's all metaphorical anyway. It's obviously about like, um, you know, control and power and then how that corrupts things and then however you get it is typically through some means like uh, it's bestowed upon you by a ring or by another person or by killing another person or something. <sighs> to speak glibly about it because <laughs> I really don't know. Um, anyway, so we've got uh, glib in our uh, repertoire of uh, Ooh, that's another good phrases. Word. Yeah, I like that word. French, uh, French things have really uh, gotten into our language, and I think we picked the easiest French shit to say, <laughs> yeah. like uh, menage a trois and shit, and we probably say it wrong. So probably, probably like, if why you went they over us. to France and said that they would just be like, "What the fuck are you talking?" Well, they'd about be here? like, "Oh, you stupid Americans! Fuck you for your stupid pronunciations." Flick a cigarette in your yeah. eye. Oh. Oh, and then smoke another one while they're... Like, they already had another one going <laughs> They somehow. had two, yeah. Hey, stupid menage a trois. You are a menage a... You are this stupid menage a trois. <laughs> um, this isn't racist at all, I guess. No, it's... Uh, st- that's real. I'm, I'm just... Uh, uh, it's real. I'm... That's how they are. So you, I would like to think that you went to France when you were like twelve and just had a really awful experience. <laughs> yeah. There was somebody flicked a cigarette in your eye, called you Menage a Trois, and you're trying to joke yeah. about it now. Yeah. But really, you're just no, like it's, pulling it's, up deep memories that you've tried to repress. I'm very sad about the whole situation with that French person. No, I've never been to France. It would be fun to go. Uh, it'd be interesting. I, I mean, it's not my favorite place to go. I think uh, I've heard that it's you know it's just another metropolitan you know city with a lot of people and. Whether they like Americans or not, it's a huge ter- uh, terrorist, <laughs> no, uh, <laughs> tourist attraction. So, um, I don't really. That would be like the one of the least likely places for me to want to travel to. I would just never want to go somewhere where I just couldn't speak the language. I don't. I would never go to a country where like yeah. they didn't. Like I couldn't just communicate with them. It, um, yeah, it would be very difficult, and you'd feel very out of place, and you'd, you know, you're trying to order a fucking sandwich, and you know, it's a. You know, or whatever it'd be, di- <laughs> baguette, <laughs> <laughs> un baguette. Um, but yeah. Anyway, um, so I just watched the new um, South Park episode. I was, I just forgot that I had watched that today. Did you watch I it? I know I need to. Still. You should watch I'm, it. I'm it's pretty good. Behind. It's about. Um, it makes fun of the um, rent a car people, like um, like Uber and uh, Lyft, mm-hmm. uh, which I got a chance to use uh, when I was on uh, vacation in California. We used it, and what I realized was that Uber and Lyft, or any of these like um, uh, app, they're like you pay by the app. You have the app. You have a little account, and then you never pay the person. You pay. Um, you pay through the app and it gets to the person, but it's individualized. So the person gets rated and they, they usually use their own car and you communicate via the app um, or they'll just call you because they'll get their phone number or whatever. But then I was in the car with this guy and he was he was from California, but he wasn't from that particular area. And California is ridiculous as far as like driving around like there. There's like a million different ways to go and you have to pick different ways depending on the traffic, depending on the time of day. And there's a ton of one way highways and it's crazy so i literally was sitting in the passenger seat the whole time and um he took like an hour and a half to get to us because he took the wrong route and then um on the way back i was navigating for him because the up the ups (laughs) the gps machine um he had it set, but it wasn't, you know, they're not perfect, and they're using their own version of GPS systems. Like, they weren't using Google uh, Maps. And uh, I was literally like, okay, you're going to take a right in about 30 feet at this next one. Like, I'm helping this guy, and I realized this is just a guy. He's just doing this on the side. He's not a taxi guy associated with a business whom I could, like, find in a phone book. This is literally just a dude who is doing this as part of this, you know, online service, it's not, it's, it was like, this, he could do whatever he wants right now. Like there's, I don't know this guy's name. He's not like licensed by the taxi, you know, people. And uh, I just think it's a really interesting thing because it's like a, a way to 
be a, a subcontractor of you know transportation. You just use your own car. You you just you know if you don't have much going on, you could just do this, and it's a really good idea. But there's less accountability. That's why it's cheaper. You know, it's that's why it's less than a taxi because there isn't any overhead. For, you know, it's just the person. It's just if I you know wanted to help somebody get a ride, I could randomly do that. Um, it's a lot of trust. Yeah, it was kind of creepy because I'm like, this guy doesn't. He's not a taxi cab driver who's been driving this city for 20 years. He's just a guy from like Pasadena who wanted to come over to this area of LA, which is massive. And I was like, he doesn't even know where the fuck he's going. So it was pretty scary. And then I ended up uh, dropping my entire sandwich in his front seat and then oh, giving him gave him a ten dollar tip because of it i felt super bad because he just like had no idea um but anyway the south park episode is pretty good <laughs> to <laughs> to finalize that yeah i was just glad that they saw i saw that they brought back uh nathan and mimsy which that tardy caca episode was hilarious so i was happy to see that they were back but i heard like uh that they don't really have like that big of an impact or it's kind of underwhelming the whole They're episode is somewhat underwhelming, and they. Mm-hmm. But the the best part about them is that the sidekick, who's even more retarded, like the big uh, Mimsy, yeah, Mimsy, is smarter than anyone in the entire episode in his scenes. He, uh, it's it's funny. It's like about free market stuff, which is interesting in South Park. They don't do that very often. It's about like. Um, competition in the free market and mimsy's just like well why don't you just increase your your uh, like clean like clean your taxis and make it better for the better customer experience and then you can compete in the marketplace and then everyone he's like shut up mimsy <laughs> and then uh yeah but uh it's a good episode you'll have to watch it um that's anyway. cool yeah no I, I i probably will tonight actually when i get home but i feel like south park always does that in their seasons they always have like a couple of kind of like dud episodes that are just yeah. like it's like they either, if they would have had more time, they could have realized their idea more, or it just was kind of, because they do those episodes so quickly, like in a six-day period, they just come up with that shit and then throw it together, so. Sure. I think that for sure they, uh, they're going to hit duds. They've been doing it for so long. Yeah. They, you know, they're like mixing and matching and trying to keep an overarching, you know, uh, concept going but you know the elements that they put in might not actually come off as really funny it's funny it's good it's f- worth watching well sometimes it's only funny too if you know um a lot about the source material like the <laughs> the references the, the washington renskins episode like that that was funny like but i didn't i haven't kept up with the whole nfl thing that's been going on yeah. with all the domestic abuse and all that stuff and oh, so like yeah. it was like i feel like had i kept up more with that it would have been even funnier because i would have had context um yeah I think the domestic abuse coming out is similar to the police brutality coming out in that now that we have cameras everywhere, stuff that was going on for years is coming out as far as like now we see it on camera and we uh, people still talk about it. But nobody's coming up with solutions for this violent stuff. They're just, (laughs) you know, they're just pointing it out and saying, oh, my God, I'm outraged. But no one's trying to figure out what's going to stop it. You know, nobody's like going... Uh, to psychologists and philosophers and are like, hey, why don't we help society? And you know what I mean? Like no one, they just point it out and they go, oh my God, this is horrible. We all have to do something. Oh, I'm going to go home now and yeah. just, uh, uh, sit down and blog about it. Yeah, it's upset. a good thing I wrote it, something about it. Anyway. Or you start a podcast and just bitch about it too. That's not there. Yeah. Yeah. That was obviously. A joke on us a little bit. <laughs> yeah. No, for sure. We're not doing any good either. But at the same time, I'm not going around putting up uh, like outrageous blogs about these things. I'm not surprised that fucking really violent NFL players hit people in their daily lives. Yeah. They have like one of the most so, violent jobs. Like their job is to fucking fight other people yeah, over yeah. a ball. So. Yeah. For a fucking ball for no reason so they can make money. And then you have police officers who do the same thing. They Their job is violence. So <laughs> it's not surprising when they use yeah. it so yeah I, I like i like how everyone gets re- outraged with no uh they just try to blame you know like the whole society or like all men with the whole uh feminism thing like feminism is such a interesting uh uh topic right now because you probably didn't know i, I watch uh stuff on feminism every once in a while and uh Emma Watson from uh the harry potter movies did this big long speech at the un about um uh, men helping to fight feminists, uh, or not to fight feminists, <laughs> to uh, to help feminists or to help women in general be more equal. But the whole thing was that men and women should be equal, 
right? That's feminism is just that women should be equal to men in social aspects. Yeah. And, um, but the whole thing was hashtag he for she. That's, isn't that not equal? That's us helping them. That's not them helping us. Mm -hmm. So it's not equal. Yeah, it right? was just uh, you're just well, asking you for bail help. Us out, yeah. Yeah, hey, uh, you guys do this stuff for us. I don't know. I, it's just annoying. Um, but anyway, we don't, we don't have to go into <laughs> feminism. I don't think any of that stuff ever outrages me. I've never, I've never been that kind of person. I'm just like, well, that happened, and uh, now we, yeah, just move on, or you know, go do something about it if you yeah, want. Yeah, or like, like it doesn't affect me yeah like if it doesn't affect I'm not me around nfl like, players <laughs> personally i'm not like buddies with one and have to worry about my life around them or anything so hmm. but i i don't know it's it's weird how like the things that people pick to be outraged about because there's so many terrible things going on in the world all the time it's like uh, some women getting beat up by their really rich significant others is pretty low probably on the spectrum of terrible things happening in the world there's people being murdered all over the place and i mean i'm not saying it's not bad i just of course be outraged yeah. of a handful of s s situations that uh aren't really that bad in comparison to a lot of other things so for know. sure i just like i'm just like eh, whatever like <laughs> you that's what you get, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Maybe you shouldn't uh, shouldn't be with that guy. And uh, the main one, one of the main ones, was the woman gets uh, knocked out in an elevator, right? And it's on camera. She marries the guy a month later. Yeah, she's an idiot. Like she made a poor life choice, and then just so later, instead of learning yeah. from that poor life, she was like, "Oh, I mean, I get it. Like maybe he wasn't violent to you, and you guys got together, and you start a relationship, and then he has a." fucking break down and knocks you out <laughs> in an elevator maybe yeah. that's a sign that you shouldn't commit your whole life to this guy but the money is probably pretty enticing i would imagine or maybe he was just really good at apologizing and was like oh i'm sorry yeah. i was on steroids and he made me <laughs> lose my mind and i hit you so hard that you blacked out in an elevator um, um but no that's a, that's terrible life decision choices for her like i don't feel bad for her at all now like sure. i get it if like she got beat up in an elevator and then was like, oh, I need to get away from this guy yeah. and put a restraining order on him and is like trying to get away from him and made a mistake. People make mistakes. That's totally fine. Um, the idea of mistakes is that you're supposed to learn from them so you don't do it again. But then if you're just going to turn and marry the person, then, you know, shit on you for, you know, like <laughs> shit on continuing you. to. Is that a phrase? <laughs> it is now. Shit it's on you, bitch. Trademark that. <laughs> Um, so <laughs> I yeah, like I don't that. know. Like, I, it's I don't know. It's not really anything to get outraged about. And if she's just gonna stick with that guy, then you know nobody should be upset about it. She's clearly not that upset about it. So yeah, I, I think out of like you said, there are a lot of really bad things happening, like wars, like uh, Palestine and Israel, like uh, fucking everything happening in America that sucks. And uh, so they talk about these little tiny interpersonal issues, so that they don't have to actually like call out the the things that cause it or or the uh you know the things that the the government does that are really bad and actually affect millions of people or thousands of people or whatever um just to go on a, a government rant real quick i saw a commercial today for the first time which was uh in oregon there are like 600,000 um voters who can't vote because they're registered as independent and the 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 thing was to put up a measure it was a measure like a bill to pass measure 90 or something in Oregon for independent people who register as independent to be able to vote and maybe i'm misinterpreting the commercial but to me that just sounds super silly like wait a minute so you guys are going to create a measure to vote so that you get the right to vote how would they vote for the measure it doesn't vote? make any sense it's so <laughs> funny and they're like and it says it says like something about voting at the bottom like vote yes or something so you're you think you're free to vote when you have to create a law that says that people can vote like w what are you not understanding the fucking like complete <laughs> retardation going on with this cycle of like to what does that? I mean, I I think I registered as independent once, and I voted. I don't I know what they're I talking do about. Every time, because I don't have like a political party side. Like, yeah, whatever. I mean, 
I just like to vote. I like to look at the the bills and then pick the ones that I think are yeah the best for me, I guess. And I'm pretty sure that I usually register as independent, so I don't know what that would be about. That's yeah, weird. it was maybe it was a joke, <laughs> like parody. <laughs> no, it wasn't. It was real. It was a real measure. <laughs> um, but I'll have to look it up. Maybe uh, um, uh, we can look it up when we're talking about something real quick. Um, anyway, <laughs> I thought that was pretty funny. Yeah, I mean, if that's if that's like if that's literally what that bill is all about, then that it, that doesn't even. How would you vote for a bill to vote if you can't vote? You wouldn't be able to vote for your right to vote. So it just would, unless the Republicans and Democrats are gonna vote for you and be like, "Oh, we really want those independent votes. Uh, we'll vote for you guys to vote. That's cool." Yeah, that. And what does it matter what you register as? What the, you need to be in a group yeah, to vote for a person. Yeah, because independent it just means that you're just not on one side or the other. You're just in the middle, essentially. Yeah, it just means you part. don't you don't want to like because they'll do a statistic that says there's this many voting Democrats, this many voting liberal, or um yeah, and then you would just assume or what is it, Democrats and Republicans mm-hmm. that one group will g- lean this way, one group. But who? What is that? What does it matter? Why do you need to label? They're just people yeah. voting for. For other people, it doesn't matter. I've always anyway, found it weird when people like lean so hard to one side or the other, and like that, like it's almost like they blindly follow. It's like, well, a Republican made this bill, I have to vote for it because I'm Republican. It's like just use just use your own decision making ability and and look at it and read it and be like, oh, I don't actually agree with that. It's okay, you can be a. Uh, labeled a republican and not vote for republican stuff that's why i've never picked a side i'm just like i'll just sit in the middle and i'll just pick the individual things that i like and uh not really just like go all one way or the other so i'm like a bisexual in the government basically uh (laughs) yeah i that well uh, as a uh anarchist i don't want to vote and i don't believe in the government so i don't need to even think about which side i'd be on but if you're gonna pick you shouldn't what does sides mean? We're not like at war. We're talking about like laws and things that affect every single person in the United States. You should just be thinking about what is logical. That's it. Just does it make sense? Does it, yeah. is it, it does it create more freedom or does it, uh, you know, really work on making things better? Other than that, you're what the fuck are we even doing? I, it's silly. And well, voting for a person, you're that's retarded. I, representation system, I think, is retarded. I, how do I know what that guy's going to do once I vote him in office? They can do whatever they want, and they always do. And we're always pissed off at everyone in government. Oh yeah, every. So time. why would you vote for them and then be like, oh my god, they didn't do what I wanted to do? Would you do what anybody wanted you to do if you had a free ride and free money and free everything? You would do whatever the fuck you want to stay in that position. That's it. That's all you would do because it's selfish. Well, it's all they're doing. They just they have to sell themselves to you, so they're going to say whatever they think that you want to hear. And then once they're in, they're in. So uh, let the bitching commence, pretty much. Here, let me read this real quick. This is uh, from the bulletin. Uh, the ballot measure, it is, it's number, uh, uh, ballot measure 90 in Oregon. So it says, uh, the ballot measure, uh, that would allow everyone to vote in Oregon's primary elections has put a few or put a new focus on whether the process would improve the state's progressive fusion voting system, a fusion voting system. I don't have, I've never heard of that. That sounds terrifying. Um, and then it says Oregon is one of 10 states that allows candidates to list endorsements of multiple parties on the ballot through fusion voting. The process can tip elections against a candidate who is endorsed by only one major party toward a major party candidate who is also endorsed by third parties. Oh, so it allows you to vote for more than one person. And what will happen is if it gets if it gets really close, it'll take the votes for um, that you voted for the other person into account so that if everyone is just voting for this person, but there's like a lot of people voting for these two democratic candidates, then more votes will go toward the democratic candidate. That's going to win or something. Um, They're just trying to level the playing field. It doesn't make any sense. What, isn't it just one vote? It means one vote. Who cares with the, f- yeah, I don't, I've but never there's only really... two people you're voting for. So it's really just retarded. You might as well flip a coin <laughs> because if 50%, uh, you know, or forty nine percent of the population votes for one, and fifty one percent votes for one. The fifty one percent wins, but the other forty nine percent loses. Well, maybe right? it, it seems like that they just enable you. It's almost like you. It's like, oh, I want this guy to win, but this guy is my second choice. So it's like if 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 the if the main guy you picked is just in like not even close in the running. 
then your yeah. vote will count for the next person. That's, that's what it close is. It's it's, the, it's like a it's an it, which is good to have more options that way. I guess uh, I just think it's hilarious. Um, and I, I, just reading this word, it says. Uh, uh, that's what happened in Connecticut's gubernatorial race in 2010. That's just a sentence. But any system that has gubernatorial gubernatorial as a word in your industry, I think should just be invalid. Like, what does gubernatorial a, mean? Who I've cares? never heard. That's a fucking stupid word. <laughs> gubernatorial. I use the term that's goober all the time. Obviously made up. Not notorial. Uh, anyway, <laughs> all, all words are made up. But anyway. Uh, no, that makes more sense, though. I, it, it's just basically letting you vote for more than just one person, and then that way, I guess your vote still matters if your main guy is just getting obliterated. At least right. your secondary guy that probably has a chance. It, yeah. I've heard of that. I say there's places. no way that it would just be independence. Oh, you guys don't get to vote unless this passes. It's like, that doesn't even make any sense when independents have been voting for years. So Yeah, yeah. It's more like if they vote, it kind of doesn't matter because their votes are so limited compared to the other one. Um, but anyway... Um, Let's talk about the word demonstrable. How Ooh. would you... Is that pronounced right? That's how I've heard it pronounced. Um, demonst- Some yeah, I mean, looking at the, the pronunciation guide right there, it does say demonstrable. Demonstrable. Yeah. I just think it's a really cool word. Um, I like words that are... Um, like when you take two words and you put them together or a certain tense of a word doesn't sound anything like this. Like demon- demonstrable is being able to demonstrate it mm-hmm. it's able at the end of demonstrate but it's not demonstratable it's demonstrable so you actually pronounce it differently in this tense uh which i think is really cool and it's just a cool word uh to say it's yeah, it's an know, interesting demonstrable I've never really even I don't know, i'm trying to think if i've even really seen that used like in writing or anything i feel mm-hmm. like most of the time people are just like oh it's able you can demonstrate that it's mm-hmm. not. You wouldn't say it's demonstrable. Mm-hmm. You would just be like, oh, you can demonstrate that or demonstrate that for us. I think it's used in anything that has to do with research because um, you would make a point. You would say like uh, 90% of, of this happens and in real life it, we can um, – it, it, it's found to be demonstrable or it's demonstrably um, the case that this is happening or whatever. Yeah. Um, it's definitely a, a kind of – uh, specific term you wouldn't just use out of nowhere <laughs> um but i like the the sound of it demonstrable and has a demon in it so it sounds yeah it sounds like a very dark word yeah it, it does it, it doesn't it's, sound like what it means deep. at all yeah. yeah that's what i mean it's such an interesting uh uh word uh there's lots of words like that that when you use a particular tense or a particular version of the word it doesn't sound like the original version at all. I wish I had come up with more examples now that I'm bringing it up. But <laughs> fuck. It. I, I mean, I, it's pretty. It's pretty obvious. It just means to demonstrate. So yeah, yeah. It's just a different way of saying it that I feel like isn't used hardly at all, actually. But yeah. I feel like you're right. I feel like I could see that being used a lot in uh, like science and stuff, yeah. just because like, they want to make it sound more is intense. Is that demonstrable? <laughs> is there a demon involved? <laughs> is it? <laughs> anyway, I'm a demonologist. Everything's <laughs> demonstrable for <laughs> yeah. me. It's the demon monsters. Um, cool. Well, let's move on to our next topic uh, since we're trying to be uh, uh, more show-like with our little segments or something. I don't know. Um, so I wanted to talk about um, how we both, for no particular reason that I'm aware of, um, decided to, and you've been doing it for longer than I have, um, but taking a, a bigger focus on health, fitness, and uh, diets and things like that. So um, I know you've been um, uh, eating differently and and, uh, doing exercises, and I have been too. Um, Can you tell me what – when did you start doing that? Um, Well, I mean, I did it – I I mean, I was always kind of an overweight kid growing up, and then in high school I – um, I started running because I remember taking PE my sophomore year and was just awful at it. Like I couldn't run hard. I couldn't even run like, you know, two laps around the track, which is only like half a mile. Um, I had a hard time doing one. And I, I just remember being inc- incredibly embarrassed by that whole situation. And so I remember I just start. I just I finally it was it was like kind of the straw that broke the camel's back for me as far as like just getting in shape. And so I. uh was the not being able to run? The yeah, it was just really embarrassing, okay, and sure. I, you know, you just it, sure it's, it's it was awful, and uh, so I just started getting up and running in the morning, and then it it literally just took off, and by um, uh, 
like my junior year, I had like lost tons of weight. And I, I literally, um, in high school, I would run like seven miles a day. I would get up and run a few miles in the morning and then I would go to school. I would go to work. And then I, as soon as I got off work, I would run like another four miles and then I would go to bed. I, I don't know how I did it. Um, it was crazy. And I lost tons of weight, like really like way too much. I looked sickly actually. Um, and then anyway, like I, after high school, then I started college and, um, I just started eating really bad because I just have time. Like I went from, you know, my mom would cook stuff for me because I lived at home in high school, obviously like most normal people. And, um, and so I just started eating out a lot and then I just slowly kind of started gaining weight and then I had no time. So then I kind of stopped running and, um, and then I just put on a bunch of weight. And then a few years down the road, I literally was up to like 300 pounds. It was, it was really bad. And, um, Actually, right around the time that I started, we started working together, I was actually tipping that close to the scale. And um, and then I don't know, I, it just kind of like dawned on me when I was like, what ha- like what has happened to me? Like, w- like, where did I like just totally lost myself? I guess like, I don't know. I got everybody would joke with me because they're like, oh, you got married and you got comfortable. That's what happened. It's like, no, I just eat really shitty and I don't exercise. Like, that's all there is to it. Yeah, it's not my wife's fault. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't like force yeah. the food on me. Um so I don't know. It was it was it was probably about a year and a half ago that I just really started uh, getting back into running again and trying to eat less and not eat out so much. And um, over the course of like the last year and a half, I've lost like 60 pounds and I want to try to lose like another 30, 40. Um, mm-hmm. And so like I've kind of like plateaued out like I was actually consistently losing weight and I've kind of just been stuck at like 240 for a while now Hmm. which is fine like i don't feel like i'm all like uh blubberous and disgusting now i mean i feel like i look pretty average but i still want to like kind of trim down a little bit and tone up and so um i i I do plenty of exercise now i run a few miles every morning with my dog i I take my dog on a couple walks i do you know like core workouts push-ups crunches that kind of stuff Mm -hmm. um so i feel like working out's not necessarily my problem so i'm just trying to even step it up further with eating better such as i ate a salad for dinner tonight when my wife went and got fried chicken from the mm. deli and i'm just like no i need a salad like that is the opposite of what i need to be eating right now you enjoy your fried chicken i'll have a salad sure and so um and like i, I try not to eat out at work i don't like try to bring like a little tv dinner that's got you know a, a measurable amount of calories and things like that um so it's just mostly just cutting back and just eating a little bit less i don't want to starve myself i'm not interested in doing that i just want to it's like you just got to get to that point again where you start trimming the weight down you got to like find that kind of soft spot um but sure. no it's, it's it just makes me feel better i you know i can it's nice to be able to you know, run up and down some stairs or like go out on a walk or a jog and not like be out of breath. Like it's just nice to be fit sure. and not uh, just miserable and uncomfortable all the time, which is how I felt, you know, a year ago. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. I, it's just something I've been working on. And then I'm just trying to I actually recently I'm trying to like step it up a little bit more um, just to get to those final results that I've been wanting. So sure. Yeah, and that's then awesome. you started uh, riding mm-hmm. bikes and I know you started dieting quite a bit. Mm-hmm. recently as well so yeah. what's uh what, what's the reasoning behind that i'm a little curious <sighs> that's a good question uh ultimately um i i don't even know where to start with the the whole beginning i've always known that i was um um overweight and unhealthy i smoked cigarettes uh, you know for years i would quit for like six months and then start up again and i just thought it was i like to smoke cigarettes you know it's just uh, activity i've always liked doing i think i'm um i my body enjoys nicotine uh just like everyone else's but i have the ability to stop smoking um and then uh what else happened i i started listening to um Stefan Molyneux, a uh, philosopher on iTunes, randomly, uh, or not randomly at all. What the fuck am I trying to say here? I don't even know where to start. I, I like, wanted to talk about this, and then I, I realized I hadn't prepared a, a particularly good explanation. But um, I think it comes down to, I started to dive into why I was, I didn't care about my body and my health, and why I didn't care about... Um, my future and I, I kind of, I never felt like I was a victim, but I felt like I was kind of a victim of myself. Like I wasn't a victim of everyone else. I didn't blame other people for my problems. Um, but I, 
I never felt like I was like had like a goal or like a reason to do any of that stuff or like I didn't feel like I was going to live long and and like be an old man who like accomplished a lot or whatever. And then um I started to reevaluate all of that uh, about a year ago and then at a certain point about 5 or 6 months ago, 4 4 to 6 months ago, I um made a conscious effort to I kind of I went on a trip to New York and then I came back and when I came back that was the marker for me to um to start changing my behavior and not just have these negative depressing thoughts about myself where I'm just like oh you're such a worthless piece of shit while you're smoking a cigarette you know like like you're just fulfilling your own shitty you know uh, expectations by doing the shitty stuff it's all your behaviors and your patterns but s- s- trying to change your pattern of behavior like starting to exercise starting to eat differently uh it's not as easy as just doing it you have to really have a reason to do it and um i think my reason was that i wanted to um i wanted to be a better person so that i could um so that my opinions and my expressions would be more would matter more to myself and other people so I didn't want to be the kind of person who has opinions and has wants to tell people things about the world and and life and um and you know who wants to be successful in business and in in uh uh, relationships and and you know all the hobbies I have or whatever I think that part of that is discipline and if you don't have discipline people don't take you very seriously if you try to give them advice um, so I guess it's kind of like a weird, it's for me, but it's also for other people that I wanted to be a better person because I know that my life affects other people when I choose to be in other people's lives. And I'd rather be a good example, um, of what people can do. And I never really thought I could do these things. I really had n- very little self-esteem and I still, when I'm doing push ups at night, I have to tell myself to do them. I have to tell myself I'm worth, I'm good and I can do it. And I, I'm like my own coach, um, which I think is really important for people who didn't have um, coaches or who didn't have um, mentors in their life growing up or who didn't have like really good examples of people like helping them and pushing them um, to do things that they can do, but they don't know they can do. Like I didn't know that I could um, accomplish what I want to accomplish. I didn't have very much... Um, uh, self-esteem or something like that, confidence, all that stuff. Um, and so I just m- said, fuck that. I'm just going to do it. I'm just going to, I'm going to do what I want to do with my life. And that involved um, relationships. Uh, it involved uh, my family and going back to my past and holding my parents accountable for the life that I um, was thrust into when I was born and grew up. And, um, it forced me to be much more honest with myself. And part of being honest with myself was I don't want to be overweight and have high blood pressure and smoke cigarettes and drink and eat everything under the sun and just sit on my ass watching TV every day. Um, it's fun. It's nice. It's easy. It's relaxing. But uh, ultimately, um, it's not fulfilling and it's not, you know, when people look at that, they don't get inspired they don't care they don't they're not like oh yeah man joe's really uh really doing something with his life you know and i guess i do want to be seen as um something like a good man you know like i want to be morally good i want to be healthy um i want to have discipline so that i can integrate that into other things like uh like work and playing pool and learning sign language um and all the other things that I want to accomplish like I want to learn the drums like I weird I weirdly have like all these things I want to accomplish now um and part of that was taking myself seriously enough to want to live long enough to do the things I want to do and you can't do those things if you're out of shape if you have high blood pressure um if you because high blood pressure runs in my family both my parents have high blood pressure and uh, my brother does and um my family too same yeah but you know smoking cigarettes and being overweight are the number the the two highest um, contributors contributors to high blood pressure and so uh, I uh, I lost about 25 pounds in the last four months nice. um, and what I think was my main goal was to not 
it w- I definitely wanted to lower my weight, but I wanted to create a new pattern, a new expectation of behavior. So I decided that I wasn't going to take time off from any of it. I wasn't going to like have a cheat day with eating. I wasn't going to have a cheat day with exercising. I was just going to do it every day. And um, other than maybe one day a week, I'll give myself off from doing exercises. Um, but every other, every, every day, six days a week, I do at least a minimum number of um, strength exercises like push-ups, uh, pull-ups, sit-ups, crunches, and uh, squats. And then I tr- I bought a bike, <laughs> fucking expensive ass bike. And uh, while the weather was nicer, I I'm I still want to go on bike rides. It's really nice, but uh, I wanted to bring some aerobics into it so that I was losing more weight a little bit more rapidly. Um, and then I lost, uh, or I, I cut calories out of my diet. So I, I don't go to fast food anymore. And I try to get to about 1500 calories a day. Um, and I've plateaued as well. Like I'm at, I'm at 159 right now. I'd like to be at 150, Mm -hmm. but at the same time between 150 and 160, I think is pretty good for me. And, uh, I don't, exercise i don't do aerobic exercises which is the best way to lose weight like yeah, running definitely i mean you will lose the fucking weight quick but oh, yeah. i also don't like to do those things so i don't want to do things that i don't like to do and because then i won't continue doing them so in a year i'm just going to be fat again so i want to do things that like i don't want to just not eat you know or just you know hurt myself with exercising or lose so much weight that i look you know like emaciated and all that um, so I just want to do things that are practical, things that I can do every day and just stay disciplined and, and not relapse into like every once in a while, I'm just like, I really want to have a cigarette or I really just want to eat a fucking burger. But I know that if I do that, I'll be giving up on myself and then I'll, I'll, that'll be one more reason to just have a burger the next day and then just be like, Oh, I'll just, I'll just do some more, you know, exercises and get rid of it. But I don't want to. At at a certain point, like, I'm going to give in a little bit to these, you know, more fun desires. But I'm not at the point where I just want to do – I just, like, feel, like, comfortable eating, like, a like pie or cake or anything. It's weird. I, like – I, like – like, I, I – it's not, like, anybody else's issue, but I just don't want – to do it like I don't want to give myself because I'm the kind of person that I kind of just stick with one thing I kind of have to do the same thing over and over and over I'm very uh um yeah, I'm habitual very, yeah so am I I, I like I to have a schedule to, yeah well it seems like uh you're less focused on like the weight loss but more of just like a lifestyle change yeah. which I think is where a lot of people have issues with weight loss is they look at it as I need to grind this out mm. for six months to get this goal weight, and then I can kind. Of, and then they just kind of yeah. fall right back into what they were doing before. You have to look at it as like, if if this is the person I want to be, then these are the things that I need to do, and this is what I have to change in my life, and then just right. stick with those changes. Right. Which is the same thing I've been trying to do myself is just. It's just make it a part of my routine every day that I just get up and I, it helps because I have a German shepherd and she has to go outside and run. So it's like it's good for her. It's good for me. It's that extra little bit of motivation. It's not like if I'm like, oh, I'm tired. I don't really yeah. want to get up and run. It's like, no, I need to because she needs to go outside and, and get her exercise. Yeah. So I'm doing it for her as well. Um, but yeah, it's like lifestyle changing is what people have to do in order to, yeah. to do that. Otherwise, it's just a temporary thing. Um Another thing that put me really down this path was that my father recently had a heart attack um, a couple weeks back, and um, I hadn't talked to him in like six and a half years. Actually, since the day that I got married was the last day that I had spoke to him. We, we've never really been terribly close. And so, but after that happened, I finally talked to him again. And, and um, kind of like you, like you went back and you kind of reconnected with your family and, and talked with them. Mm-hmm. And I had a similar experience with him. Like I talked to him and then I saw him. And, um, it just made me think about my own life and I, it just, it dawned on me that if I kept going the way that I was going, that that was going to be me in like 30 years. Like, I mean, he's only like 50, maybe a little younger. And I, it just, I was just like that, that is literally going to be me unless I do something now to change who I am. Um, which I was like, I was already starting to do that, but it was just like that extra, a uh, bit of motivation that really pushed me to try harder and to really um, finish out changing the things that I wanted to change. Um, but it, it's tough. It's definitely like a little bit of work each day because it is so easy to just fucking slip right yeah. back into doing what you used to do. Um, 
I don't know. I, guess, I feel like it's just like anything else in life. You just you start doing it. You force yourself to do it for a while, and then eventually it just becomes a part of you. Yeah. Um, and it, it gives you a huge sense of accomplishment, um, yeah. which it, that's another reason why I do so much writing is it's I could easily just not write ever again and stop and spend all my time playing video games or watching TV or whatever. But it, I feel like it gives me a, a sense of purpose, and I feel like I kind of contribute to the world in a way, in like a meaningful way. Like I write things um that are important to me they i mean they're fictional but i feel like i always have every every story has morals and lessons that they try to teach you and so it's like when i'm dead those things will still be there and i left a mark on the world and that's like hugely important to me um to know that i've done something with my life um other than just wasting my time and being f- fat and pathetic like i want to be the just, i mean pretty much literally right along the same thing with you i want to be somebody that people will listen to when i talk and respect and um i it i get a little like i it's kind of like gloating a little bit but i like kind of like to tell people that i like that i write books and i have books written because that impresses people especially with me being so young they're just like what really and then you know they go check it out and it's just it's cool it's nice to have that accomplishment and know that i've done something with my life um i mean even if i died tomorrow at least i did those things which is probably more than a good amount of people can say. I mean, I don't obviously know everybody in the world, but I feel like a lot of people kind of just drift through life and don't really do anything. And then they're dead, they're gone. And that's just the end of it. Um, which I mean, I don't want to be like remembered by everybody, but it would be nice to just have that marker left on the world and be like, Oh yeah, that guy did these things. Um, so yeah, it's cool. And it's just funny how it all kind of ties together. It's all about your lifestyle, your choices, what accomplishments you want to make. Um, which kind of, and which is like this podcast thing is is kind of like similar along those lines. Like we're creating something that will be around for God knows how long, and people can listen to. And um, it's like a record. Like if I died tomorrow, we have you know all these recordings that we've done, and so it's like I'm still there. I've left a mark. Sure. Um, so I don't know. It's all. It's just. It's really interesting um, to find reasons to change your life and and better yourself. Um, and it's just, it's unfortunate that so many people don't find those reasons or just let it go and don't try. Sure. Yeah. I think, um, it's, um, I don't know, I guess ultimately it's, it's up to the individual to decide what they want to do with their life. And, and, you know, as long as people aren't hurting each other, I don't judge them particularly, but for me, I have high expectations for myself. I, I know that I can accomplish things and I know that I can, um, that what I say matters to me. And so if other people are interested, you know, expressing myself is, is the only way to, to get that stuff out there and let people know. Um, yeah, it's weird. I, I just really hope that, um, I don't come up with bullshit excuses. Cause like, like I said, I have to tell myself to do it. I have to like, like uh, almost every night I do push ups to, spite my history like I'm doing it to spite my lack of discipline earlier in my life like like just a year ago I'm like I'm I'm doing it to prove myself that I can do it like I'm just like I'm trying to and I'm also proving to my dad and to other people who weren't like particularly motivating to me that I don't need them and at this point in my life I'm I'm doing it for myself, which is a lot of people end up doing almost everything they do because they they blame the environment. They blame everybody else. Oh, you know, blah, blah, blah. This person, you know, thinks this of me and this person thinks this of me. But ultimately, you're kind of in the world by yourself in your head. You are the one who if you want to take responsibility and say that you have choice in this world, then not doing good things, not being, you know, healthy, that's a choice. And you can either take responsibility for that or you can be a victim and blame everybody else. And I'm I'm trying to get away from my kind of self-defeated, like, history and past thinking and all that. Um, and it's been awesome. It, it really, it's like, um, you know, I, I, I like feel like I've accomplished something like you said it's it's and it's it's not something that I go around talking about other than being proud of it you know with with the people I know and want to talk with but um it's 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 cool that I know that I can do it and I it gives me more hope that I can learn new things and do new things and change my behavior um in the future 
again. You know, if there's something that comes up, I think it just makes you stronger when you go through. Because it's not easy. It's not easy to go from eating literally whatever you want. Literally. We've used that twice so far in the hopefully correct way. Um, you know, anything you want watching TV all day, nothing particularly like educational or uh, fulfilling or, um, you know, whatever. And then from that to now I don't play video games as much um, because I, I like look forward to coming home, eating my salad for dinner and doing, I don't even, I don't even let myself play a video game or eat like, um, uh, I have like uh, those like fruit snacks, you know, like that's like my treat. And I don't let myself do that until after I do my exercises. Like I do um, like, you know, a set of crunches, some push ups, pull ups, squats. And if I do my minimal amount every day, because I do it every day, I don't even, except for like one day a week, maybe mm -hmm. I'll stop. Then I let myself have the fun and do whatever I want. Um, it's like a treat. I, it's like a you know reinforcement mechanism I've created uh, to help myself do that. Yeah, I do the same thing. I mean, yeah. I have like the fun thing, like video games and things like that that I want to do. But typically, <laughs> I make I get all my other shit done first. Yeah. Like I exercise, I get my writing done. If I need to clean house or do laundry, like I do all those things first. That way. And then, and then you kind of get to enjoy your favorite thing more oh, because yeah. you're like, oh, I fucking did everything already. Right. Like I can literally sit here for the next like two or three hours right. and guilt free because I did everything. Totally. Um, and that's like the only way I can do it because I will I'll, if I like try to like get up and, and just like go straight to playing a game or something. I just feel guilty while I'm doing. It. I'm like, oh, I really need to go do this other stuff first. I need to take my dog out. You know, and so I, I'm the same way. I do, I do the like my required stuff first, and then I do the rewarding, fun things afterward. For sure. Yeah, I think that's uh, that's important. And what's sad is that it took me 30 years to get to the point where I one feel like I deserve to have a good life, and that I can control myself and control my my environment, and you know, not you know have all these things just happen to me in the world or whatever and then um uh and and you know be proud of the fact that i'm hopefully you know lowering my risk of getting a heart attack at 50 and um you know if i keep this up for the next 20 30 years um and uh what the fuck was i saying i think we've covered this pretty well <laughs> um and uh, horse is dead yeah so I, I i it's awesome you're doing that and um, that's, you know, motivational. Uh, I don't know a lot of people that do anything to change their lives who take who who they just have excuses or they don't care or they just say, meh, whatever, I'll do it some other time or whatever. Or they don't want to talk about themselves in that way. Um, but I think it's important to address the things that you're not taking seriously or the things that actually matter and uh, doing things to change that is not easy. But I, what I'm saying is I think it's sad because, you know, no one in my life is going to help me do any of this stuff. I, I have to do it on my own. Um, obviously, having people around me that are not a fucking alcoholics and or or, you know, like like, you know, that just it just gives you less motivation to do these kind of difficult things. It's much more difficult to exercise and eat less food. That's the opposite of what our 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 you know society and nature tell us to do you know our our bodies tell us to eat as much as possible relax as much so that if we need those reserves we can have that that fat reserve during you know uh, droughts or whatever um so it's like fighting you know and it's fighting your past behaviors which was you know you, you just were allowed to do whatever you want so you did whatever you want not knowing the consequences um you know, I, I always knew that it wasn't good for me, but I didn't really care. It wasn't like like smoking cigarettes, like whatever, who cares? Like whatever, I'll die at 60 or 50 or 40. I'll get cancer. I didn't care. Well, it's easier to, when you don't have like an immediate consequence yeah, to those exactly. things. Because people, especially younger people, yeah. um, don't think about what their yeah. life's going to be like in 40 years. They don't care. Like they're just, they just care about the here, the now, and that instant gratification from doing whatever right. it is that they want to do. <laughs> Um, which is why I started to try to think into the future. Um, cause I mean, I don't feel the effects of any of the negative things I've done right now, but right. in like 10 years, I mean, if you keep going down a bad route, then you're definitely going to start seeing those effects on yourself. Um, 
So reversing those things now and just not even having to worry about it is much more sure. uh, appealing to me than yeah uh, than just fucking eating Burger King every night and playing video games. So. Dude, I think I saw a picture of a burger from like McDonald's or Burger King, and it made my mouth water. And I was like, "Fuck me, I should just go eat that shit." And I eventually, like you know, in maybe a month or two or a week or two or whenever I feel like I'm comfortable with it, I'll do it one day just to enjoy life again you know in that way but um i enjoy not i enjoy being disciplined it's weird because i never thought that i would ever be that disciplined i'm not that disciplined i really i kind of just you know i eat what i want i just eat a lot less of what i want and i eat you know and i and then the exercise stuff is really hard so i'm pretty disciplined on that because i fucking do it every day Mm -hmm. i literally at one o'clock in the morning i will be doing i'll do like 50 push-ups i can do 50 fucking push-ups with my feet elevated on the couch Oh, nice. It's fucking silly. I think I could do about 30. Yeah, 40 that's if fucking I push a it, lot so of push ups, dude. It People, hurts too, I mean, but... I'm just, I'm thinking to myself, and then I'm, I'm in my head going, you're, you're, it's like, it's almost the don't be a pussy thing, but it's not like that, like in my head. It's more like, you can do it. You're awesome. Fucking do it. You're going to feel good about it. Like that. It's more motivational than, um, negative uh anyway um we should probably get going because i gotta get uh out of here um, oh yeah it's but a good, it's a good spot to wrap it up i think i think so um i really enjoyed this uh particular um slightly more concise uh episode and uh we're I, not, I th- we weren't spitballing this time we actually had, yeah i really <laughs> had uh, an idea of what we wanted to talk about so yeah um do you have anything else to add before we finish up no other than We'll just be doing this again next week. So yeah. if, I, if I think of anything, I'll just uh, remember it for yeah for seven sure days or whatever. Write it down, and then uh, we'll we'll post uh, we'll post this uh, whenever uh, we post it. I don't know whenever the fuck I want because I'm whenever. in control of it. So uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, yeah. Thanks, and uh, see you next time. Have a good night.